I'm Josh. And I'm Ben. And this is the Accidental Marketers Podcast, where we have conversations with marketing leaders at tech companies, as well as business owners we think are doing interesting things with a heavy focus on growth strategies. We hope you enjoy the show. Well, hey guys, I'm Ben Yost, and we are the founders of Linkflow and co-hosts of the Accidental Marketers Podcast. Uh, where we feature top marketing and growth leaders in the B2B tech and SaaS space. Today, we've got Dr. Jeremy Weiss here of Rise25, who's done thousands of interviews with uh, successful entrepreneurs and CEOs, and we've flipped the script, and he's actually going to be interviewing us today. I'm excited, guys. And the reason is because the topic of more traffic, more visitors, more revenue, is always top of mind for companies. And that's really what we're going to discuss today. But before we get to it, this episode is brought to you by Linkflow. And uh, Linkflow, they're a link building service geared towards the software and tech industry uh, that helps their clients with increased traffic revenues through high quality link building SEO strategies. And I know you guys were telling me this story. There was a healthcare software company. I know you help all sorts of companies, B2B SaaS, et cetera. And they were a client and they wanted to rank for super competitive terms. Like who doesn't, right? They want to get to the top of the search engines, but they were sitting at page three of Google. So if you search your website and you're on page two, three, four, five, six, probably no one's looking at it. And you probably need link flow, I imagine. Um, they weren't getting any clicks. So you help them 10 times their traffic, outrank Wikipedia and the New York Times in six months. So uh, you got into this because you've heard horror stories. We've all heard horror stories and experience some shady practices, uh, sometimes from link builders that are not being transparent. They're building, you know, actually low quality links that that can hurt a company and hurt a site. So to learn more, you can go to linkflow.ai. You can email Ben personally at ben at linkflow.ai. So I want to start with first, uh, Ben, Josh, just talk a little bit about Linkflow and, and what you do there. Yeah, for sure. So uh, at Linkflow, you know, we're a link building agency. That's been our core focus for years now. Um, but I think, you know, we take a different approach to link building when compared to a lot of our other competitors. And that, uh, you know, the core of all of our link building strategies is built around solid SEO foundation. Um, and, you know, we have a team of, of ec expert SEOs uh, that work alongside all of our clients to monitor the results that they're getting with our link building campaigns. Whereas maybe a lot of our other competitors are kind of a la carte, purchase your links and then kind of kick rocks. Um, we follow along with our clients and ensure that uh, the high quality links that we're placing for them uh, are, you know, getting the kind of results that they want and also the kind of results that we want. I saw on your website, it says holistic SEO strategy. Is that what you're referring to where someone's like, hey, just give me a link on this page, but they're not really looking at the whole strategy? Correct. Yeah. So holistic is, is what I mean by that is that, you know, we're looking at things like on page content and technical SEO to see how those tie into a link building strategy. Because if, if you just start building links to pages with no real kind of wide view on your overall SEO strategy. Uh, you're on the risk of wasting a lot of time and money, in my opinion. You know, we mentioned something about um, in the the first thing that I mentioned about shady practices um, and low quality links. So what are some of the things people should watch out for? Um, you know, maybe a company contacted them and they're worried. What should they watch out for in this sense that could get them in trouble? For sure. So I think, you know, Certainly, like we've run into this before where we get a lot of emails from just like random people overseas offering backlinks. And I think when you first start out your journey of like looking for backlinks, uh, that just starts happening. Uh, it's like a snowball effect. It's like you reach out to one person, then all of a sudden you get 10,000 emails with lists of backlinks from who knows where. I right? get those. I get those every day. I swear. Yeah. So do we. They all go to my junk. Uh, and the reason is because they're all junk. Um you know, first and foremost, I think when you're when you're analyzing a, a backing strategy, um, you need to go with if you're going to go with, you know, an agency, you should make sure that they actually have SEO chops and they're not just. Yeah, they're not just selling links like a la carte. Um, the reason I say that is because, you know, it's easy enough to just sell 
go out and find like providers and things like that, uh, or, you know, a uh, publication, um, and then pass, pass the link on to someone else. But if you don't have like actual SEO chops, you're not going to know, uh, what's, what makes a high quality link. Right. Um, and so that brings me to kind of my second point is you should probably be using a variety of different SEO tools to vet your backlinks. Uh, a few that come top of mind, the ones that we use pretty regularly are Majestic and Ahrefs um, to just vet all of the different metrics uh, that are available through those, those tools. Um, and we also use Moz as well, um, but we find that Ahrefs is generally more up to date with a lot of their metrics. Uh, and just using all of the, the different metrics to, to analyze, you know, okay, so is this link a good link? And specifically, I'm talking about, you know, DA, DR, uh, trust flow, um, you know, traffic. organic traffic, yeah. right? Um, and, and just analyzing those and making sure that they're all up to snuff, right? Yeah, if there's, a, if there's ever been sort of a, a, a penalty on the site uh, from which you're getting the link, you know, that's... A, a definite red flag you want to disavow remove that link um right or if you see like an abrupt jump in traffic or an abrupt drop off in traffic uh that would also be like a red flag that maybe hey this is part of like a pbn or something like that yeah uh, or you know likewise if it's a drop off in traffic it's probably been penalized by google um so so yeah just looking for kind of steady growth in organic traffic in the sites where the links are coming from um you know, from a holistic perspective, um, Josh, I want to t- touch on this for a second. I mean, you have some major chops. Um, didn't you get your MBA? Yes, I did. I went to Kellogg. I got my MBA there where I studied marketing. Um, and that's kind of where I, yeah, where I learned about the basics of marketing and marketing strategy and how I got interested in ultimately um, deciding to start a marketing firm. Yeah, because I mean, I know, like, like you were saying, Ben, someone could take a piece of like, hey, let's just get this link. But looking at the holistically and how that converts, like, because like you, it's not like you, you want your clients to be successful. So talk about some of the things you think about after that link, right? Exactly. So like, for instance, you know, if a client is selling something that is, is not Maybe the way that they, uh, the phrase they use for it is not something that people are searching online. Um, right. We come into this qu- quite often. Like we'll kind of have to steer them and say, okay, um, you know, we understand this is the term you guys are using, but there's there's like zero search volume for this. No one no one is searching for this specific term, um, and so. In a lot of cases, we have to kind of steer them to, okay, but but this related term has a lot of search volume. And it, it's really like, this is kind of the fun part for, for us is like the con, the consumer psychology, right? Like what are what are people really looking for? Um, and then how can you make part of your site or your whole site about that? Um, and then if you have kind of a specific way you want to refer to it, how do you kind of get them in the door for that other thing and then steer them uh, towards your specific solution. Um, but first, you know, if they're, if they're not searching for that thing that the way you, the exact way you word it, then they're not going to find you in the first place. So we really kind of take it at it with the, that top level lens of like getting in the, in the head of the consumer. What are they looking for? What are the terms they resonate with them? And how can we then optimize you know, our link building efforts around those terms? Yeah, Does that and make I think, sense? I think a lot of that um, stems from the fact that Josh and I come from like a business perspective. We're not we're not SEO. Yeah, I mean we're we're not like uh, thinking about this strictly from an SEO perspective. We're thinking about how from the overarching like business goal of growth, right? How does SEO tie into that? Um, and that that probably is what separates us from the average SEO agency owner, I would say. Um, but, so yeah. we talk, you know, one of the, and people can go to your site or uh, linkfold.ai, you have a, <clears throat> a case studies page. 
Actually, people can look at some of the case studies. One of the case studies is you have several there, but uh, is life apps. I know you help B2B SaaS and a lot of different types of companies. Um, when someone like life apps comes to you, what are the, what are they experiencing? What are the pain points they're experiencing? Uh, yeah, usually it's, it's like, you know, slump or non-existent organic traffic. Um, you know, they're, they're kind of in obscurity with, uh, their search terms and they want to kind of be catapulted onto the first page. Like that's kind of everyone's dream for SEO, right? A lot of yeah, times it's, yeah. it's Sorry, bandwidth but... issues as well. Um, we found it to be bandwidth issues as well, or maybe they've just got one or two people in house doing marketing. And those people generally have, you know, 50 different things going on, uh, 50 different projects, and they all require 40 hours a week. Right. Um, so, you know, that's something we run into a lot as well. Um, Josh. Yeah. yeah the, the only other thing is um, a lot of times so, like, um this company will talk about like they had great content and they'd invested a lot of money into that content um so that's kind of like a sunk cost right if no one's seeing that content so um building links to it is is hard to do um it's hard to do repeatedly which is really what's needed in order to rank when your competitors are doing it month after month which is the case most of the time so um mm -hmm. Yeah, so a lot of these guys will have great content that they've spent a lot of money researching and writing, and then they're just like, okay, now what? And, you know, it's it's crickets. So really, our job is that, okay, you've got the content. How do we make it more visible through link building and kind of like turbo boost it uh, in search engines? So that's that's typically another problem we face. Yeah, get it in front of the, the end consumer, right? It's the, is it like a build it and they will come scenario? So like, oh, we produce these amazing long blog posts. They think that's all we need to do. Yeah, and honestly, like within the SEO community, that's that's a strategy in and of itself too. That you know, we I would say the piece missing from that is link building. Uh, there's a lot of SEO agencies that will just push content. And in my opinion, it's because it's they're able to charge you know more for that, um, and and then they're they're missing that backlinking piece, which yeah. elevates the content and, and rankings. Um, so yeah, it's definitely a build in they'll come and and you know, that's, it's well, it, yeah. And um, I think I think what yeah, what's key is like if your site has a ton of authority already, like your your New York Times. Um, you can write you can write a long article, not build a lot of links, and it is build it and they will come. If you're kind well, of well, because they middle, probably already have a lot of links out there. Right, they have right? a lot of links to the overall site. Exactly, they're getting um, them right there, like, Whereas if you don't, if your site uh, authority, to use you know kind of an industry term, is if your DR DA is kind of like below seventy or sixty, you know you can't just create the content. It's not a build it and they will come scenario. You have to write the content and then you actually have to like build links to that content uh, in order for that to rank in, yeah. in competitive industries. If it's totally uncompetitive, then perhaps you don't need to, but that's more and more rare these days. Yeah, and I think like the majority of our clients that come to us are within that you know 30 to 50 DRDA range. And they're like, hey, you know, we're competing with these companies that are in the 70 to 90 range mm -hmm. how can we how can we get you know up up there with them right uh and so they're looking for that strategy and you know as we've said that that strategy is is a holistic link building approach i'm sure that's a common question you get um which is how do we compete how do we compete with bigger competitors that have a lot more budget what right. do you say to them um, yeah, I mean, look, uh, a lot of it is uh, like, it first starts with kind of a planning process, right? Uh, and looking at the search terms that they want to rank for. Um, so a lot of time, you know, we'll have a client that says, oh, well, we want to rank for accounting software. And obviously you're going up against like Intuit, right? Maybe TurboTax and, and companies like this, right? Um, and 
to be honest, in a situation like that, it's just not realistic. Like you're you're never going to, if you're a small software company, it's it's very unlikely that you'll ever compete directly with that keyword and get on the first page of Google, unless you have $10 million in funding, right? Um, but what we can do then is we can go out and we say, okay, well, let's look for other related search terms that are have a lower keyword difficulty and let's get you ranking for these, right? Um, and you know that's kind of how we take a, an approach to kind of you know ranking tactics uh, and, and ranking strategy when you're going up against uh, one of these massive companies. Where it's like, okay, we can capture a significant amount of this traffic by ranking for some of these other terms that they're not focused on at all, right? And and so that's that's definitely one of the big approaches to it. Um, yeah. yeah, you got to get the low hanging fruit. It sounds like if you know the right strategy. And, you know, the other thing I'd say is like a lot of the times as we're going after like long tail keywords um, and maybe some of those more obscure keywords, um, they'll actually lend additional kind of link juice to that main keyword of accounting software. Right. So if you have like accounting software for software companies, right. Or whatever, that's like a goofy example, but um Right. So if you have something like that, you're still going to end up ranking for accounting software. It's going to it's going to help your ranking for accounting software. But the kind of end term, that long tail keyword is what you're building content around, maybe, and then building links to that content. Yeah. So for life apps in particular, I want to talk about some of the outcomes. Uh, I know you did a full case study on it and we, we don't have to go through the whole thing, but just a few things before we get into that. I want to hear. If someone's like, this sounds good. I know I've been writing content and it's not working like I thought because they're not building direct links to their pages and to their content and they're not getting the authority they want and they're not getting the, the traffic, et cetera. How does it work when someone comes to you? What's the pathway? Because I know you you have a roadmap. Um, what are the steps they take to when they are uh, going to work with you? Yeah, so uh, kind of like you said, you know, we start every engagement with what we call the roadmap. And that's, again, really laying the foundation for a holistic uh, SEO link building strategy. Um, and we're doing a deep dive into really all kinds of things. But the significant one is, you know, overarching business goals and then how those tie into SEO, right? And then lining up. Um, aligning their SEO strategy with those goals, right? So that goes into, you know, content, goes into competitors, um, competitor research, right? Goes into um, on-page and, and then, of course, off-page SEO link building, right? Um, and so all of that ties together into a holistic one direction uh, that we start to push them in, right? Uh, so once we have that strategy in place, you know, really what it is is just um, having them spin up if necessary uh, any content that we might recommend uh, for the search terms that they're wanting to rank for. Uh, if they have content on their site that we think is like awesome already, great. Um, but a lot of times we find that, you know, additional content needs to be made or, or maybe we need to merge some content together into one place. And then really it's just going after it and building uh, links strategically and targeting uh, the pages and, and terms that we want to target in a strategic way. Um, and, and kind of doing that in a, in a cyclical, natural fashion. So we maybe focus on, you know, four or five pages at a time and we'll rotate those in and out uh, on a monthly basis. So it's not, you know, hammering 100 links a month to one page, right? Uh, and then we do a slow and steady progression. And, and over time, right, we see the rankings climb, organic traffic climb, uh, you know, clicks climbing. Um, and yeah kind of results end up, you know, catapulting uh, our clients onto, you know, first page of Google, climbing up the rankings, uh, you know, 10xing traffic. I think we've seen like, we had like 281% in, in, you know, six-ish months um, for for life apps, which is awesome. Josh, anything to add as far as like, so from an outcome perspective, right? So it sounds like you do a kind of a, a roadmap you get the full strategy down and then you implement that strategy. Um, what's, what's some of the outcomes that you, you tend to see? Yeah. So a lot of times, you know, we, we kind of look at it, um, 
step by step. So the first thing we're going to see, ultimately, what we want to see is increased signups. So, you know, our focus is, you know, more demos if you're a software company um, or just people filling out forms. So ultimately getting more conversions, right? That's what everyone wants. Um, there's a lot of steps that happen along the way to getting to that point that are kind of uh, leading indicators that what we're doing is working. And so um, Ben Tish touched on a bunch of them, but like the first thing we might see is um, a jump up in the number of keywords that you're ranking for. Uh, and that could happen in as little as two months. Uh, then the next thing we'd see is, all right, now you're moving up the, you're moving up the rankings for some of the, the prime keywords that you want to rank for. And that could happen in three, four months. And then the next thing we want to see is, all right, your impressions are going up, but also your clicks are going up because you're getting to page one, um, and towards the top of page one on the keywords that we're focused on. And then from there, um, we want to see the conversions going up. So we're always, we always ask for our clients, Google analytics, um, if they're willing to give it to us, which most of the time they are, because we want to make sure that it's not just vanity metrics here. Um, but that we're actually seeing the conversions go up and that's what's trend. That's what translates to ROI for our clients. Um, you know, getting more form fills so that their sales team can then call on those people, convert them into, into paying customers, um, which is what it's, the game is all about. So yeah, yeah, ultimately it's, it's about conversions, but there's a lot of little steps along the way to get there. Yeah. That I mean, sense. we've even made like, we've even made recommendations for conversion rate optimization for clients, right? If we're seeing all the right things move in the right direction and conversions aren't, you know, we'll make recommendations say, Hey guys, you know, in the spirit of helping you get ROI out of this should think about making some tweaks here and here. Right. Um, or testing these things. Right. You've yeah. seen enough sites where you can, you can kind of tell. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, ab absolutely. Yeah. I have one last question guys. And before I ask it, I want to, I want to hear about if someone's listening to this and you're like, okay, I'm not sure if, it's working. I, I probably need help with my SEO. What's a big mistake they may be making now that maybe they should look at just as a low hanging fruit to start with? Um, before you answer that, everyone could check out linkflow.ai, learn more, check out more episodes of the podcast. What would you tell someone? Where should they start? What's the maybe a mistake they're making now or something they're not doing? Yeah, I mean, I think start exactly how we start is with strategy and planning, right? Um, you know, you wouldn't go to a doctor and just say, I want this medicine, right? So don't, don't just go out without, unless you're an SEO expert, tried and true. Um, don't, don't just go out and just say, this is what I want. I'm going to buy it. Right. Like with backlinks, for an example, um, make sure you have a solid strategy in place before you get started. Make sure you have a solid SEO foundation on your site before you start doing anything. That uh, would be my advice. I don't know, Josh differs. Yeah, no, that that totally is is true. Um, and um, yeah, I was saying, you know, link building is really hard to do. And that's why we got into this business because we just, we tried to, you know, we saw clients trying to do it. And consistently, like they could create content, they could do on-page SEO, but they couldn't build links. At least maybe they could do like a sporadic here and there, like one or two a month. But when we're talking about like 10, 20 links a month, which is what they really need, like unless they hire someone full-time to do that, um, which most, most do not, and it's quite expensive. And the caveat um, is... If they hire someone to do it, who knows what they're doing? <laughs> so you can well, hire they someone better know to what do... they're doing, right, yeah, right. for sure. Because you can get in serious trouble uh, if you if you do your anchor text wrong, for instance. Um, if you're too heavy handed on that, um, there's all kinds of things you can screw up if you don't know what you're doing. So yeah, I would also like add to that is like the combined expertise that an agency like ours has to offer is probably going to be higher than any but any one individual that you could hire, right? Uh, I'm even saying that as somebody who's hired 
tons of SEOs is that I know our team, if I brought something to our team between all of them, we would have, you know, cream of the crop information and, and, and uh, strategy, right. Versus just asking one person, maybe a full-time hire that you might make. Awesome. Well, thank you both. Uh, thanks for having me. Everyone check out linkflow.ai for more, check out more episodes of the podcast. And if you want to know more from top business leaders and uh, marketing SEO and everything else, check out the podcast. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Jeremy. Thanks for tuning into the podcast today. We're going to go grab some tacos and beer, and we hope to catch you on the next one.